to get that out. But the, the maintenance is they'll keep them under observation, not allow them to use anymore, and if needed, we'll give them Narcan or whatever other things to be able to pass that. But that's what's really important. We don't leave them alone. We don't let them use again. And really the best thing is that we get them into health. Because number one, they'll keep them safe. It really is not you know, a good feeling to narc cancer when they save their life when they find out that they died six hours later. Yes. Because nobody was around. Right? Um, or 90 minutes later. Um, really? and, and also, hopefully, if they're there on observation, so they get better and they find they sober up, hopefully we can actually get them help at that point engage in some level of treatment and not run back to it rather than just maintaining the cycle. Does an IV flush out the opioids? That's actually not. Um, now again, just reiterating that Narcan doesn't do any harm. So there's no effect if there are no opiates are present. I get this question all the time. So somebody did, you know, uh, cocaine, can I get them Narcan? Yeah. It won't have any effect on the cocaine but it won't harm them either. We think that the person could be, we have reason to believe that this is an opiate overdose, give the Narcan. Yeah. It doesn't mean we Narcan every random person who might be sleeping, but the idea is that if we have reason to believe that this could be a opiate overdose, there's no harm, and you can really just save the life. Um, and, and again, you know, it's not addictive, but it only works on the opiate. So if somebody's doing, let's say, you know, opiates and some other drugs, opiates and benzos, it will have an effect on the opiates. They may still have a lot of benzos, a lot of alcohol in the system that still needs that treatment. They may be dealing with one problem, but there's still other things going on we have to um, acknowledge as well. So response to an opiate overdose. So what are the signs of an opiate overdose? Basically said what, not, what the opiates do is it represses the system and, and slows down the breathing. So really what we're really looking for is slow to stop breathing, blue, grayish lips and nails, the blood flows not going on, and primarily unresponsiveness. Obviously, if there's evidence of substance use, just, you know, you show up into the party and all the friends say, yeah, we're just doing man amounts of uh, heroin. Okay, so that, that would be, you know, pretty good evidence. But when we, you know, chance upon a person, this is really the thing that we're looking for. So that the signs of that slowed or repressed breathing or no breathing, and primarily unresponsiveness. So you can shake a person, try to really wake them up. You know, we talk about a sternum rub, which is uncomfortable. Um, to get a response. If we're not getting any sort of response, then the person really is call 911 because if this is an opioid overdose and you wake them up, you may have to deal with them at that moment and may not have time to go call 911. So call 911 if somebody's with you, have them call 911 so that help can be on the way. And then we administer the Narcan. Give um, me you know, one second. We're going to give out the kits. Basically, in the Narcan, you have two doses of Narcan and a prescription card. This is actually not in this one. A prescription card, which officially it is a prescription medication. I believe that primarily that's because they want people to engage in, in some level of, of a training so that if there's a problem, they know what they're looking for, they know what's going on, they talk about it, and hopefully get people help as well while doing that. So there is a prescription card in there. I've never had a situation where like somebody gets Narcan and the cops were like, hey man, where's the prescription? It's there to save the life. So, but it is there. What you want to do is try to wake the person up, have somebody go call 911. If you do need to leave them, turn them on their side so that if they're off, they're not going to there's not some other thing going on. Um, and then you administer the Narcan. Essentially, the Narcan is basically a nose spray. Use one. Scale it back and pull it out. It's one dose. There's no cap lines, no anything on it. It just goes up the nostril. It's a single dose. Once you use it, that's it. It's depressed. It can't be used a second time. It doesn't really matter which nostril you give it to. You know, everyone is all close to the same place. Um, what we use tell people if you give one and they don't respond, you know, in a couple of minutes, give the second dose. And if you remember to do it in the other nostril, the reason for that is in case there's a blockage, in case there's something going on that we don't see, we are just bettering our chances. That being said, if you don't remember which nostril to give it, you have to give the Narcan. And don't sit there and like, oh my gosh, I don't remember which one. Just give the Narcan. Um, again, as the person is awake, make sure you stay with them. They may be in withdrawal. They may not be as appreciative as you'd expect them to be. Um, 
and make sure that they really are not left alone and they um, don't use any more. The other thing just to know about this is the Good Samaritan laws. If, you know, what they were found, finding in New York City really is that you have these situations where people would die and they'll be overdosed and there were really people around and nobody called 911. And the reason is because often this is going on in a place where this drug is going on and people are scared. And we've had situations where you know, people are going to an overdose and telling their friends, you know, you can't call my mom, you can't call whatever because what's going to happen? What, what is going to die? And that's what's going to happen. That's like a big problem, right? But in that moment, we're like so terrified of the repercussions of it, and we really don't do anything. So they actually passed the, the Good Samaritan laws, which means that if the first administers Narcan and the cops show up, he's not can't be charged for up to an A2 felony offense. Whatever that is, meaning essentially for this drug use that's going on now, right? Now, what that means is that the person giving the Narcan can't be charged. It doesn't mean that continue partying, everybody else should hang around because, hey, oh, you know, it's all good now. You know, everyone else should go home, and whoever's getting the narco is involved, and that's just the state that'll be okay. That being said, also, it's this offense, it doesn't mean that they show up in, like, mouths with cocaine and, like, cool. They're proud.